welcome to today's session. It's our first WBON Women on Boards Network Ambassadors Mentorship Program. My name is Rose Sang. I'll be moderating today's session. This is the first uh, mentorship session. So please send us your feedback so that then we can improve as we go along the way. So karibuni sana and let's enjoy the session. Now today's topic is really about board dynamics. And we've seen that in many organizations, many countries, board of directors, particularly of large organizations, have functioned too long as black boxes. Directors focus has often, and understandably so, been monopolized by a laundry list of issues to be discussed and typically approved at quarterly meetings. The board's own performance, effectiveness, processes, and habits receives scant reflection. And many directors are happy to leave the corporate secretary with the task of keeping sight of governance and best practice. Suddenly, they do not regard it as their own responsibility. However, increased regulatory pressures are now pushing boards towards greater responsibility, transparency, and self-awareness. In some countries, and I'm sure here as well, annual board reviews have become compulsory in addition to mounting concerns about board diversity, provision of greater scope for questioning the status quo, and achievement of more heterogeneous mix of specializations. And so tonight, it gives me great pleasure to have Rita Kavashche on board, taking us through the topic around board dynamics. She is no stranger to us. Um, we all know that uh, she sat on several boards across, and she's currently the Managing Director of Isuzu East Africa, formerly General Motors East Africa, the largest motor vehicle assembler in the region, selling a wide range of Isuzu vehicles. Her career in General Motors began in 1995 and its East African operation where she worked for the last 25 years and has successfully transitioned the company to Isuzu East Africa. She holds a bachelor's degree in education, received from Moore University and a master's degree in business administration from the University of Nairobi. She's also an executive coach by the Academy of Executive Coaches in the UK. In 2017, Rita was awarded a state honor, the Moran of the Order of the Burning Spear for exemplary service to the country in her capacity as business leader. We couldn't have chosen a better um, session for Rita this evening. Board Dynamics, Rita Kavashe, you can take it up from here. We're waiting to listen to you. Karibu. Uh, you can see me? Yes, Rita, we can see you. Oh, good, because today I had a, a training, retraining on a telephone etiquette. <laughs> and uh, one of the team members was asked, so what do you, do you dislike nowadays when people are engaging? And uh, what uh, my colleague said is that uh, you are trying to speak on a Zoom call or on a Teams call. Uh, you are talking, but you are actually you have muted yourself. So I'm struggling, unmute, unmute, unmute. So I want to make sure that we are all connected. So I'm very happy and uh, thank you, uh, Rose and, and Catherine and team at Women on Board for inviting me to share my experience and to really have a discussion uh, on board dynamics. Uh, and uh, I have had the opportunity to serve in several boards and uh, I would like to share some of my own reflection and experiences uh, that I have acquired over, over the years in, in, in serving in boards so that we I can strengthen ourselves as women uh, in really our role as, as board members for those who are already serving and share ideas. Uh, for those whom we are grooming to take up these leadership positions, can I at least have a glimpse of, of, of what we, we are going through? So when I was reflecting on the topic around board dynamics, it's really uh, to me uh, an issue of, of how individuals are uh, who have been mandated, who have been given the role to serve, to oversight uh, organizations, whether public listed companies, a private sector or government, come together to interact. 
uh, with each other as they go on their role of, of executing the mandate for which uh, they have been asked or they have been called to perform. So it's, it's a whole uh, great system of engagement and interaction with each other. And this process uh, of, of board dynamics for me starts way back at the point of, uh, of the selection process uh, of board members. Just as in, in corporates and companies, when we are hiring, we sometimes hire and we take into consideration matters to do with culture, matters to do with fit, uh, will this employee be able to fit? So will this board member be able to fit? What is the board struggling with at any one point in time? Uh, is it matters to do with the regulation? Are they trying to get to market? Uh, different reasons for which then board recruit. But that process for me is, is very critical uh, in facilitating a greater board engagement uh, in future. So state agents have got political appointments. Uh, in, in private sector, we have uh, uh, the nominations uh, and governance committee of the board that is responsible for looking for talent. And uh, sometimes actually uh, we have uh, uh, the board asking for board members uh, to head and or to recommend. Every time I see on women on board, uh, they are, positions that are falling vacant and uh, women on board leadership is called upon to recommend. So sometimes it can come through such process. And what I've found to be beautiful around such a process is, is the fact that um, board members know, know the, the culture of the organization. So when they recommend, they recommend for the right fit. For whatever reason then, to create a strong dynamic, the recruitment process of the board has to be robust in the sense that we don't just bring our bodies, our friends, but also we consider, as I've mentioned, culture and, and feet and the task at hand that needs to be executed, then we, we support in the recommendation. So we have the board, we have now a, group, a good board, we have put in in team, uh, we think a good team. Then I, what I have experienced, uh, and that I have found of very, very much value for me. Uh, I was uh, appointed in a, a startup board, uh, a commission where we had to do everything from the beginning, have our policy, set our agenda, and we, we were trying to uh, offload state organization, organizations. And uh, it was my first time actually to serve in a board. And what I have found extremely important that I, I recommend and I continue to experience in other boards, uh, after the appointment, then there is the induction. And the induction is so critical, again, in, 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 in the whole dynamics and in, in terms of making sure that the board is very well equipped to be able to execute. Because in the induction process, uh, we learn about the policies of the organization, we, we have an opportunity to go to the industry itself. If you are new in a particular industry experience, uh, the work, you meet the, the management, uh, you start to observe the culture of the organization, how the organization operates. Uh, you meet new board members and old board members in an offsite uh, session in the evening of a drink, then you, 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 you start to, to understand how you can collaborate. But for me, what is critical is, is, is understanding the, 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 the industry, understanding the, even the words that use different industries have got shortfall, uh, a short, uh, short um, acron ac ac acronomies uh, and, and words that you really have to learn for you to be able to effectively uh, execute uh, on, on, on the mandate. So these are very important aspects that at board induction, an individual is, 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 is well groomed uh, to be able to, to participate and make a great board member and to be able to, to, to shift on the fly, so to speak, to be ready to operate uh, at the onset upon being, uh, being appointed as a, as a board member. 
The other aspect that I've seen in, in, in terms of uh, really being a great board member uh, is uh, those uh, uh, strategy sessions uh, that normally take place off and above the normal board meeting that is, is very structured and there's a particular agenda and all that. There's quite a bit of, of value uh, that I have seen in terms of uh, really becoming uh, a great board and, and be able to to participate more uh, uh, well in a board meeting is, is strategy sessions that do happen in, in some boards that I serve uh, every half yearly. Uh, there is a strategy session where the board uh, meets with the management and they review matters to do with the, the business goal for next year, if it's a five year plan, if it's an investment and all that. So different management uh, uh, come to the, to the meeting and they, they shared in, in terms of their section, what are some of the strategies that they are working on. So this, this really helps the, the board members to be well versed uh, with, with the business, to also uh, have an opportunity to see who are the, some of the team members who are presenting that can be, can be leaders in future in terms of succession planning and, and uh, all that uh, type of activities that the board is also uh, involved in reduces the, 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 the time that actually board members ask questions so that they can learn the business in these strategy sessions, all that is unpacked. So the board is completely familiar with the operations and therefore when it comes to questioning, they question, they question less and focus most of the time in some of the strategic items uh, that needs to be discussed uh, in the board. Uh, they say um, work without a play makes Jack a dull boy. I, I fully agree. For boards to really find excitement in, in their work, there are moments when the board retreats. Uh, so my experience with board retreats allows the board to, to, to relax, uh, to unwind, uh, to build team trust, which is critical in, in being effective in, in the work that uh, the board has been tax, tasked to do. Uh, it's an opportunity also for other talents. We all have talents that might not necessarily be visible in a formal uh, board engagement that we can observe and maybe someone like the chair of the board can, can start to see uh, other aspects that are useful in, in, in creating a great working board that might be reflected during an off-site conversation. But uh, sometimes uh, I, I have engaged in a board where we have had to turn the course because the structure and what we found in the board, it was, uh, it was so like well-planned. This is the way you execute and all that. Everything, every score was green. Everything looked great. But when we asked ourselves in an offsite session, everything is looking green, but we are losing money. What could be the issue? So in that offsite conversation, we had an opportunity to think uh, strategically, look at the KPIs, look at the parameter. We think we can do better if we change the narrative, if we ask the management to dig deeper and, and, and look at other aspects that we think are important that are not being looked at at this point in time. And we started to change the conversation and start to bring in the agenda of the board in what we thought was more important in terms of driving the success and the sustainability of the organization. And that came out out to the board, uh, the, 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 the meeting, uh, the official board meeting in a retreat where we just were brainstorming how can we add more value? What will three years for, uh, after our tenure in a board look like? What, what will we say are our key success factors as a board? If we remained in the routine of the, the procedure of the board, I don't think we'd have had an opportunity to change the course of the activities and the engagement. And when we uh, brought this to the attention of the, the leadership, the management, and the management were able to incorporate some of the new thinking that as a board, we brought to the table and we, we were beginning to get more value. We were bringing more KPIs. We we're looking at things in a different way with a view to really strengthening 
uh, the operation and the, and, and the bottom line of the same. So it, it's, it's, it's a great opportunity when we retreat and we have an opportunity to engage uh, outside the board, then some subjects, some topics that are like change related are able to, to come up and, and be shared uh, with the team. So uh, Sang, this is just but part one. I, I can go to the other part of the conversation if it's say around, then how do we then as a board uh, facilitate a conversation in the board as part of the board dynamic? So in terms of at the board meeting itself, when we, when we are in the board uh, and we are about to have a conversation and an, an engagement, for me, what I've seen working in terms of creating the right conversation, remaining on topic, getting the best out of board members in any given board meeting, what I've seen really working is, is the pre-board, uh, a pre-board conversation. So the board meet together for 15 minutes, Without the management, uh, we have a quick conversation uh, that brings all of us up to speed, puts us in the right frame of mind in terms of the topics that are ahead. If there's anything that has been found uh, from a committee that is of material that the board directors need to be brought up to speed, then the chair of the committee uh, engages and advises all of us and we, we are together and we are in a good state uh, to start the conversation uh, uh, of the board meeting. To a great extent, most boards, boards that are professionally managed, uh, have got a procedure, a procedure of the board. They, it's kind of, uh, there's a process. So uh, you have the, you have the, uh, the quorum, you have the agenda, you have the minutes, uh, you have apologies, you have conflict of interest. Those are preliminaries that normally the chair of the board will dispense of those very quickly. I have seen in some boards to, to, to support in, in terms of time to leave substantive time for serious board conversations. Uh, some organizations, especially those that have very long uh, minutes, the, the, the time is spent uh, the minutes are pushed to the to the back end of the conversation so that when board members are fresh, they can engage on the more critical subjects uh, that are on the table for them to discuss on. So with the procedure, then the, the chairperson uh, can facilitate uh, very quickly the preliminaries. And now we have systems, we have uh, board, board programs like Confine and all that which allows board members to declare their interests, to also raise comments uh, on, on areas that as they're reading the board paper, they can put in the comments uh, so that the board, the, the management can be able uh, to, to ventilate on those and be ready to answer if additional information will be required. Then they prepare in advance uh, to, to make sure uh, that information is, is available. So again, leveraging technology, uh, is very important in supporting the conversation that that will be in any one board meeting. Uh, so board committee papers are, are very important because then if they are well written uh, and uh, the, the, the chair of the committee picks up the most important aspects uh, of that committee. So maybe are things to do with budget approval, and it's well documented to say this one we are seeking approval, this one we are just informing uh, the members uh, and all that. That becomes very, very easily uh, for us to dispense of those and or to debate if it's an investment that uh, is being recommended. Uh, then a lot of time then is left for the board to debate, bring new ideas, bring new uh, perspectives, so that then a substantive time and debate is given to make sure that those important aspects that are being presented for approval by the board are given the due time uh, that is being saved from the, from the, uh, the conversations. What I've also learned having been a board chair is, is the very important 
uh, to, to facilitate when facilitating a good conversation for the chair to be very, very well versed with her team or his team. Uh, because uh, we have personalities and we are very dynamic uh, in, in our own rights and the chair needs to be able to familiarize themselves with the, how their uh, board members uh, participate in, in board conversations. There are those who talk and think later. There are those who think and talk. There are those who keep quiet until the chair uh, asks them uh, so and so what you take. How, how do you feel about this conversation that is going on? So the, the chair needs to make sure that they are in control, they are alert, they are aware of the topic, and they are uh, facilitating a, a debate, a conversation, and incorporating his or her members to make sure that they're engaged in the discussion so that they can arrive at the best decision possible. And uh, for me, uh, it's so important while having a conversation on a, a topical issue, whether it's route to market, whether it's investment, whatever said subject, succession and all that, the board to be, the chair to be aware of the, the skills that the chair has at his or her disposal. Uh, because the board is very diverse, comes in with a, quite a bit of, of skill. We have lawyers, we have accountants, we have uh, marketers, HR practitioner and all that, all these uh, form part of the board. So the board, the board chair has a very important role in terms of uh, knowing how to make sure that these individuals uh, who are having this conversation that relates to their field of expertise uh, are called upon from time to time to weigh in uh, in, in that con conversation over and above, making sure that everybody else uh, participate. Uh, also, I, I've seen so much value uh, in ensuring that uh, the, the conversation is, 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 is good uh, and uh, that all aspects have been looked at. Uh, and this is the collaboration, especially between the chair and the CEO. I have found it very, very beneficial uh, when I meet with the, my CEOs where I, I chair every other month to, to touch base, uh, see what are some of the things that are, are important that the, the board needs to be aware of or what is the CEO going through to just build rapport so that you are not strangers who meet uh, only during the board meeting but to ensure that there is a, a conversation. And then uh, Personally, when I join a board now, I ask, I ask the nomination committee, what is it that you, you want from me? What are you, the issues that you are battling with? What are you going through uh, that you think I can add value? Uh, because it's, I don't think it's fair to go to a board, accept this position, uh, we are very busy individuals and uh, not to add value. So I have learned now over time to see what value do, do they want me to bring at the onset. So I pay attention to that, whether it's matters to do with the regulatory, whether it's uh, matters to do with customers, whether whatever the subject is uh, that they, they, they want me to join in, then I know that that has to be a very important substantive item of the board and uh, that has to be reviewed regularly. There has to be additional effort uh, within the board or outside of the board that we need to pay attention to those areas uh, that the company is looking uh, as to, to support. And uh, I personally ensure as a chair that how can I leverage my board members uh, with, if it's regulatory work, how can I leverage the, the, their networks uh, to support the management to make sure we achieve on the aspect that uh, they think is troubling to them. So it's very important to be to be aware what are the issues, where is the area of focus for the company, how can I add value, and that becomes uh, a, a substantive item, 
every time we are having conversation on the business so that we don't lose focus on the core thing that the company is looking uh, to achieve or the challenge that the company is looking to overcome. So those are very important in terms of during the conversation, how do we follow the procedure of the board? How do we save time so that then we can spend more time to focus on substantive issues? How then do we, as the chair, what is the role of the chair in ensuring that uh, he, he's tapping into the, into the skills, the diversity, the networks of the board members to be able to have a great conversation? How is the, is the, the, the chair vast? How are well connected is the chair and the, the CEO in terms of, uh, of, of the, the meeting? Uh, how is the agenda uh, uh, crafted? Are we following through the agenda? What are those aspects of the agenda that are so mission critical that we need to allocate substantive time to be able to converse? Board members are so busy. They love it when you engage them and they're experts in their own field. So they want to have a board meeting that, that engages them and spare them of uh, any bureaucratic process. So it's good to dispense quickly of non, non um, important, but can be done faster, uh, routine uh, activities, uh, stay on course in terms of the agenda and the topical issues and close uh, very well. Am I, am I running out of time? Okay. Uh, so as, as again, we continue to engage, uh, it's very important uh, in board dynamics to make sure uh, the chair especially uh, is leveraging the team, building some uh, co cohesion and inclusion in the team, building strong partnership, between the, the management and the, and the board. Uh, so for me, in, in, in terms of the board, the board is just, a, it's just an engagement, really. It's an engagement on, on a set of subjects that we are, are discussing, that we are looking to find solution. So to be productive, uh, uh, the board needs to leverage its skills, so the perspective of board members, the experiences of board members, the management, the diversity again of the team, all these aspects of the team, those dynamics come to play in creating a cohesive team uh, and, uh, and uh, inclusivity. You know, you don't want to leave anyone behind, any board member behind or any management board behind. So the chair has got a very important role to really leverage all these skills. But to me, the foundation of, uh, of the engagement, of the dialogue uh, that is at play is always driven by the mission and the purpose of the organization. That to me is the, the foundation, the culture of, of the organization, understanding the culture what is type of culture? Is it an open conversation culture? So then when it's open, and this is the culture that the board also needs to foster, when it's open, then people are able to debate issues without uh, feeling like they don't have trust or they don't have a safe environment to share or to disagree with any perspective. So culture to me is very important. And the board, the board chair has the most important role in terms of creating uh, this cohesive team and engaging team between the, the board as well as the, the, the management in terms of uh, debating and, re and resolving conflicts that may, be, may arise as, as a result uh, of, uh, of that type of, uh, of engagement. So again, uh, also uh, board, board uh, I, I have been a board chair and I have a um, CEO. And, uh, Management work very hard. Actually, they drive the business. And uh, sometimes when we are not able to celebrate, you know, you have served in boards where you just keep on hammering the management. You know, they are winning. But this is not coming out of the board to, to really co co congratulate management, celebrate the wins that the management are making. 
to me that can demotivate a, a team that is, is, is really trying and putting their best. So it's very important for the board to create a cohesion, inclusive jailing between the board and the management to make sure that where they are really good successes, uh, great effort, then the board needs to continuously coming up to make sure that we are celebrating and supporting our teams to continue uh, to execute it in, in, in their mandate. One of the, of the most challenging things that uh, I have experienced is, is, is to deal with, uh, with conflict. I, I, know, I know in the, um, uh, in, in the board, uh, we, we learn a, lo a lot around conflict, how, how we manage conflict. The conflicts come in, in many ways. It could be conflicts of interest because I have been appointed to this board I am representing the interests of the main shareholder, and I have to rally, I mean, to make sure those interests are, are protected. You have minority shareholders who maybe could also be presented some board by some board members, uh, and we are making a decision, do we invest or not to invest? How does this invest affect minority? How does it affect major? There could be conflict there that could arise. And then the chair has got a responsibility to, to, to ensure that uh, the, the, the conflict uh, is moderated by understanding where are these uh, conflicts em emanating from and putting them to debate and reminding, uh, reminding board members that their responsibility is to this particular entity uh, not necessarily to the appointing entity because now we have been appointed but we have a role a responsibility as a board uh, to ensure that that operation is got very good oversight. The decisions we make are the, for, for the benefit of that particular institution, and and then making sure that the decision uh, that the, the the board arrives at is is is, is very well uh, thought out. And sometimes also this can come in the form of um, the agenda itself uh, and. Uh, uh, whether we need to, for instance, we have COVID-19, uh, digitization is a, is a big issue, uh, and we could be in a board meeting and an agenda item is about investing in a digitization process, and uh, you have uh, uh, board members who have got history with the organization that think we are successful, we don't need really to spend the time and the money, in any investment because we already are number one in the marketplace anyway what do we need to have to invest all this money at this point in time in a particular investment and then you could have another board member who is who is knowledgeable on the value uh the future uh, value of digitization and is pushing for the for the company to invest in that process now so that can just bring a conflict just because of the agenda item on the table in terms of when to uh, to invest and uh, this can be moderated of course by the chair but again in the pre-work in the pre-conversation this can come out in terms of how do we make the business case how do we make the motivation pros and cons for future you know the analysis of the business case if it's well documented and the, and the, and the management have done a good job in terms of its presentation and its benefits then it makes easier for the for the board to make a more informed decision on the subject that that is is being uh, is being discussed but overall to mitigate conflict emanating from an agenda item or personality and ego <laughs> uh, in in a few years ago there was a very very serious uh, governance issue uh, an organization that almost uh, closed shop just because the board members had big egos. They were actually taking the business down, I won't mention uh, the name, but they were almost taking, that business has actually never fully recovered. And it was purely because of ego. And to me, they lacked, they lacked diversity. They, they lacked some catalyst in the board because it was 100% male. So I kept on thinking, if there were a few women in this board, could they have supported this board to fuse 
uh, the tension that was there and, and come up with a more balanced decision that would still propel the organization forward despite those challenges, I still think strongly that actually uh, if there were women on that board, that conflict would have been mitigated. So again, as we try to mitigate conflict, bringing all this diverse uh, thinking, having a board that has got both men and women can help quite a lot uh, in, reducing, in reducing conflict. Again, going back to the culture, the business at hand, the role of the chair in making sure that uh, they are diffusing these conflicts or potential conflicts way in advance, just by the way we frame the issue, by the way we uh, engage with each other and the management governed by our board, uh, our board process, our board procedure, and uh, our own culture and uh, the, the, the goodwill, the goodwill of ourselves, our own dynamics as, as a board can really do a great job in terms of helping us to reduce conflict as we execute our, our role. Rose, I will stop here because uh, I need to have some conversation with the team. Thank you so much, Rita, for sharing um, thoughts around board dynamics. Indeed, you've covered a whole array of issues. And so at this juncture, allow me to uh, request Kantai to split us into uh, about four rooms. I can see we're quite a number on this webinar and we want to be able to engage a bit more intimately uh, with yourself. So the process now will be that we'll split ourselves into four rooms. Um, each of you will then, each room will select a chair and have a conversation around the areas that Rita has talked about. Uh, have that through and Rita and Catherine will then be able to come into your rooms and have discussions with you. It's an opportunity for you to then be able to ask some of those burning questions. And so they'll be our roving ambassadors for this evening. So Hannah, I can see you've uh, split us into rooms. We'll give you about 15 minutes within your groups to discuss the issues around today's topic with regards to board dynamics. Um, diversity was one of the issues that uh, Rita spoke about, um, facilitating the right conversations, building cohesive and inclusive teams among the board. And of course, you know, how do you manage conflict in a respectable manner? So let's have the discussion for the next 15 minutes, and then we'll be able to come back into the main plenary and then have the final remarks as we close. So. It's 8.40 now, about 8.30, we should be able to come back into main plenary and have the final discussions. So Hannah, over to you as you break us into our rooms. The rooms are open, Rose. The participants need to click on the prompt so that they are able to join. Mm -hmm. And note this. And that really helps in terms of preparation. Even the board member enjoys reading the board pack because it's so well, it's so well organized. Uh, so that is very important. It helps so much the board member to be able to do it because otherwise you might need a whole month in poorly prepared board papers to, to read and you get tired just reading and you cannot then be able to flag out the most important issues that you want to contribute. And I talked about technology. Uh, if you're in a convene, for instance, uh, as a tool for your board uh, information, then you are able to even highlight areas that you need to seek clarification. You can ask questions, um, you can uh, declare interest, you can do all these things pre at the actual board meeting. And the, 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 the management are, 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 are looking at uh, those papers uh, interactively and they're able to see where the areas the boards are, are, are concerned about. They can prepare additional information that can be shared during the, the board meeting very quickly. So again, condensing and improving and sifting the material so that only substantive items come to the board that is very, very critical. Uh, and I can pick that together with the Catherine's question around you know, pushing the minutes to the end, how about uh, matters arising? Uh, so again, the, the chair would be able to establish that if there are very significant matters arising, then 
it's important to cover those earlier uh, than, than maybe later. And uh, if they are not so significant and you think you can save time and allow for time for also to ventilate on those up towards the end of the meeting, that is okay. You can bring them earlier if it's very critical for the, for the, for the board to really dispense of those before they can get into the, into the agenda of the day. So that is, is to the discretion of the board and, uh, and the team on the ground, depending on the issues that needs to be, uh, to be looked at. But again, when the minutes are properly sifted, all that can go on within three, four hours. And you can actually really do a good, good, good meeting with that time. Others go for a full day, you get tired, you go for lunch, you come back. I find those very tiring and we get tired and we are not able to pay attention to most critical elements. Uh, controlling founder, that one, this one I found very, very interesting uh, because it can really be a, a big a challenge because the individual will be dominating. I hope he's not the chair of the board. Uh, if he's the chair then uh, uh, and has appointed a board, it's because I think he had the belief that he needed a board to support him in, 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 in managing and creating a sustainable business with good oversight. So again, uh, there are opportunities to engage a, a controlling founder in, outside. Sometimes he has his own perception of how things to be done. After all, I founded this business. I know how best to run this business. You people, you don't have an understanding of what it takes. You know, it can be a whole thing because after all, he's the founder and he's developed his business to a level where he has a board, meaning he was making progress. But again, again, um, this is where you take, take it off site, prepare very good positions because you know the founder might reject and he's strong and could be having quite a big stake of the business anyway. So it is about marketing the concept to him in and outside, preparing extremely well-motivated uh, board positions uh, in terms of whatever decision, the recommendation are clear, different scenarios have been evaluated so that the individual, the founder is convinced that we need to move in a particular direction. But I think a lot of off, off, off board, off main board conversations need to take because we need to do a lot of work trying to change the mindset to shift. Yes, you created a great business, it was successful in a particular time period. The way things are spinning out, it might not be successful unless we change the course in a friendly, respectable manner, because this is also an ego issue. I, I founded it, so who are you to challenge my position? So there's quite a bit of technique and tact and uh, massaging. I hope a woman will be doing that because that's where we come in strongly to make sure we shift the individual towards a more sustainable direction. Uh, political appointments and how to navigate this one is tough. I have experienced uh, once, <laughs> uh, and it was to do with the hiring a CEO in a government institution can be extremely difficult because several interests come to play and uh, I found myself in a difficult position because I kept on getting calls from everywhere and everywhere around who should be considered. And uh, I, I, I put my foot down and that is why it is so important to build the trust bank account with your board member for your board members to see you as an individual who has mainly the interest of the establishment at heart, and then again, leveraging your uh, appointing, appointing, office, uh, appointing uh, authority. For instance, if it is the, the CS, the PS, uh, those individuals are very important for you to update them and bring them up to speed in terms of, I'm going to hire, this is the way I'm going to hire. I am going to make sure we get the best individual for this business. And then you can also engage 
uh, for instance, you engage, um, what are they called now in government? In the school, school of government uh, as, as, as an, an independent institution to support you and facilitate you in the hiring process. In that way, you create um, an environment where you're using a professional, not just you board members, because it's a, an issue of so much conflict and so many interests that you would like to use an establishment uh, like Kenya School of Government to support you in that decision. But what I always believe, if I take a contra decision that is not in line with my values, how will I be able to account uh, for it? Uh, I have not been uh, unlucky to be in a very severe one. I know other people can be very in very severe ones, mm -hmm. But I would always ask myself, is it worth it? How will I be able to explain to the media, to parliament, if I took a decision that endangers the institution that I've been called to serve, but more so endangers my own reputation? How will I feel if I found myself in such a position? I have not been unlucky, as I've said, but I know many people have been, but also, uh, sharing, talking, you know, women on board is a good forum. If I find myself conflicted about something or I don't know how to react, there are many friends to call. I can call Catherine, I can call Wanjiku, I can call, go to the peers. I can share that wait list to get ideas and input on how to handle. But the one that I really had a, an opportunity to go through was uh, hiring a, a, a chief executive. Uh, finally, at least we succeeded and there was no uh, conflict, but it was a very, very challenging moment for, for me as, as a chair. Thank you. Have wow, I left Rita. anything? No question. Not, not for now. I think you've done okay. a fantastic job. As I said, I don't know where the time went. We could go on and on and on, and we really must have you again here to just, you know, continue to engage with you. So thank you very much, Rita, for, for that insightful session. And thank you for accepting to be a Women on Boards Ambassador. We look to you to continue to guide us and we will walk with you in, in terms of this journey to getting into board leadership. Allow me to invite Catherine for just 30 seconds. Kusalimia Wanainchi. And to just say a few words and to thank uh, Rita for this session before then we can close the session and be able to get back to our families. Catherine, over to you. All right, thank you. Amazing, amazing session, Rita. Thank you for the great nuggets uh, that you've shared with us. As always, we look up to you to hold our hand, to support us, to share your knowledge. Um, if there is a brand ambassador who is so willing to empty of herself, that is you, Rita, and we cannot thank you enough. Members, Asante for coming. The discussions would not have been so rich if you hadn't joined. So we are grateful that you actually took the step to join. We learn every day. I have learned so much myself and I'm looking forward to the next uh, session. If we don't uh, interact before uh, Christmas, allow me to wish you happy holidays, Merry Christmas, happy Christmas, blessings to you and to your families. And do, do please make sure that you keep safe uh, so that we see you again next year. Thank you so much and God bless. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Happy much. holidays, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank That's you. A Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank Thank you. you. Bye. Good night. Thank, Thank you. Good night. Thank, Thank you, you everyone. Thank you very much. And thank you, Rose, for moderating the session so well. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine, and to Hannah and Kentai and uh, Mrs. Wanga. Yes. Asante Sana, as always, they do a wonderful thank job. So thank you. you. Asante thank Sana, you. thank you very much.